Welcome back here with Nate28. This is Cross Beats Production. So I want to say thanks again for tuning in as per usual and I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate the likes. I appreciate the comments, even the negative ones when they seem to come about sometimes. Um, I, <laughs> thanks for the view, by the way, um, if you may. Anyway, so um, I just wanted to show you guys the Oritone mixing technique and um, even if you don't have a pair of Oritones or Aventones or NS10s or any closed cabinet speaker that's a mixing speaker, if you don't own a pair of these, there's some workarounds that you can do to um, assist you in uh, having a frequency response similar to those type of speakers. It's not that hard to do. Um, I just want to go into some detail though before I get into that and just explain to you guys kind of what this is all about. Um, so this is a continuation first off from the video that I did last night which you guys would have seen if you're a constant um, viewer on my channel and I really appreciate the guys that do that. It's, um, it's definitely something that helps me get through uh, producing more of these videos for you guys. Um, so anyway, let's get into the Avatone theory or the speaker with the closed cabinet theory and let's get a few ideas as to why they use those speakers and why they're a good reference monitor for um, detailed, I guess, frequency response in the mid-range area. So the speaker itself, um, if you can see here, it's got a system response of 90 hertz. I'll just highlight this. So 90 hertz to uh, 17,000. So what... Why I think this is good and why this frequency response um, is beneficial for, for a lot of real world situations is because most of the time anything below that kind of that 90 hertz area, unless you're in a car with a subwoofer or you're in a club with a subwoofer or you're in an area that can reproduce some kind of low frequencies as a speaker, um, you're generally not going to hear the uh, below 90 hertz or even slightly above that sometimes. Um, the way and the way I'm explaining this and why I'm explaining this is because I, I see like in in a Sydney, Australia, which is where I live at the moment, uh, I see people get on the train and I'm sure this happens in New York, all over the place. People get on the train, they have their iPhone, they have this, this stinking little loudspeaker cranking as loud as they can get it going and they've got music playing out of that and they think that sounds good. I mean... I don't know what you hear out of those little phones, but they don't really sound very good in my opinion. But anyway, people listen to those and that's their way that they consume music because they want everybody else to hear the music as well. So if you're thinking about that in a real life situation, you're trying to play your music or somebody else is playing your music in situations like that where there's loud noises around them and all sorts of stuff going on um, and they're playing their music on these little ridiculously crappy devices. Um, you know, they're, they're not going to be able to consume the music the way that you originally put it out and what you heard in your studio and the way you thought it would sound in real-life situations. So there's certain techniques that people can use and that you can use yourself, um, which I'll show you in a second, to kind of help you work around getting a more mid-range centric uh, mix and assist you in getting kind of a mix that might translate a bit easier in real-life scenarios such as that. So... Basically, this is the technique that I would recommend if you don't have a pair of Aventones or Oratones or speakers like that, um, which you might see in studios similar to uh, what I'm going to show you in a second. So this studio here, right, it's got an Avatone speaker in the middle, it's got two NS10s and then these big whoppers that they'd probably use for A&R stuff uh, to show all the people the music when they come in to check it out. Um, but for the most part, they'd probably be mixing off these three speakers here. So they'd have this for the mono which is kind of the setup that I've got in my studio. I've got a mono um, Aventone speaker in the center. I don't have NS10s. I've never owned any of, and a pair of them either because they're passive and I just don't want to get the amp for them at all. Too much trouble. Anyway, but these are uh, um, NS10s and um, they basically would be mixing out of these and getting the frequencies to sit right on these speakers. And, um, you know, when they got them out in the real world situations, you'd hear the, the frequencies would be responsive on iPhones and things like that. Um, the, the iPhone response, if you're not familiar with the frequency response on that, I'm just going to zoom in on this and show you what this looks like. So basically, this is the curve of the iPhone um, 3, well, the 3GS. This is probably an old little curve thing there, but I'm sure that the speak hasn't improved since then or much anyway. Um, so the curve is pretty much anywhere from 200 downwards. Uh, it really dips off any of the low end frequencies. So all that you have to play with is 200 to, say, maybe 10k or somewhere above that um, even 17 possibly about 18 18 kilohertz something to that effect so the bulk of your frequencies are going to be from 200 to that frequency there to 20k and you're going to try and fit in your mix to sit right on situations like that and i'm guaranteeing you 
if your music's played outside of your studio anywhere, um, if it's on devices like this, you're going to want it to sound decent. So the technique that I'm showing you now is this technique here. So basically, I roll off on the master bus. Um, this isn't something you do if you're, um, if you're starting out your mix, but I would recommend it once you've got your mix, a static mix done, you've got all your panning done, you've got the compression, all that sort of stuff, if you want to add that to the mix. Um, once you've got all that done, then try this out and see what you uh, actually end up with at the end of the mix and cut off all the frequencies, say from about 100 hertz, or even you could go up to 200 if you want to dip it out just to be like the iPhone. Um, but say dip it out from there and dip out anything that's say roughly about 10k or maybe even say you go up to about 15 or 16. Uh, just dip that out and see what you've got left over and see what your mix sounds like um, after you've done that. And just play that on your master bus and see how you go because um, this will be... I guess the telling factor to know whether or not certain things that you thought you mixed into your mix are actually still there or if you had a sub in your studio or you've got some decent studio monitors that are actually just playing back stuff that you won't be able to hear anywhere else. So I thought this was a good tip that would help you guys out in even in the production side of things if you're choosing a kick. Um, you can put an EQ on like this and just play, you know, play your kick and see what is left of the kick once this bass is kind of cut out and if there's any snap on the kick, if there's a transient you can hear, um, you're pretty much going to be right to go when you're playing that in, in with other instruments you've got. The other thing I could say is, you know, when you're mixing in a mid-range kind of centric kind of way, um, you've got to be careful of far, as far as where instruments sit and where they're going to sit in the mix and, and kind of get them all to sit cohesively. But this is a, a kind of a, a cheat technique that helps you understand where things might be actually going to, you know, where they actually might sit in the real, real life situation. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As per usual, I really appreciate everything you guys do for this channel as far as comments, likes, and all that good stuff. Um, and I'm going to bring you some more content very shortly as well. This is just the part two of that previous video that I showed you. So, I'll bring you another section to this video and uh, we'll get to that on the next one. <laughs>